between 1971 and 1973, three young girls between the ages of 10 and 11 were tragically murdered and raped. Those girls were Carmen Cologne, Wanda Walkowicz and Michelle Manza. These tragic deaths were dubbed the alphabet murders. Carmen Cologne lived with her grandparents in Rochester, New York, and she was originally from Puerto Rico. She was described as a 10-year-old sprite with a lovely smile. On the 16th of November, 1971, Carmen was last seen leaving a drugstore near the corner of West Main and Genesee where she was picking up a prescription for her mother. A witness say they saw Carmen getting into a vehicle and her willingness to get into the car would lead to speculation that this was the person who killed Carmen and that she knew them. On the afternoon of November 16th, people leaving Rochester were greeted by a horrifying sight. A young girl with dark hair and naked from the waist down was sprinting along the Chiliriga exit, waving her arms desperately seeking help. A man emerged from a car and led her back into it, turned back onto the highway and sped off. What is one of the most shocking things is that of the 38 witnesses who saw this, none of them reported it until days later. Unfortunately, by then, it was too late for Carmen. Her body would be found two days later, 12 miles from where she was last seen on a side road in Riga. Her pants were found on a service road and she had been sexually assaulted. And according to the autopsy, her skull and her vertebrae had been fractured before she was strangled. I think we can all agree that when someone is murdered, the police are always going to investigate those who are closest to the victim. That is why people started looking into Miguel Colon. But to Carmen, he was called Uncle Miguel. He was interviewed by the police but later fled to Puerto Rico where he was originally from. Miguel would commit suicide following a domestic violence incident and was never indicted or charged for Carmen's death. Wanda was an 11 year old girl who was described as being quick witted and had an impish smile. She was the oldest of three girls so when her father died suddenly Wanda helped her struggling mother at home especially with her youngest sister. The 11 year old was used to these newfound responsibilities. So on the afternoon of the 2nd of April 1973, Wanda Walkwitz left to pick up groceries at a corner store near her Avenue D home. Wanda had left her home at 5.10 and it was shortly before 8 o'clock when Joyce Walkwitz, her mother, called the police to report her missing. At 10.15 the next morning, officers knocked on Joyce's door to break the bad news. A girl's body had been found behind a rest stop in Webster. Joyce Walkwitz answered the door in tears. She had already heard it on the police scanner she had been listening to. Wanda's body was discovered by a New York State trooper on patrol near the Bay Rest area. Though evidence of rape was apparent, Wanda was found fully dressed. Her autopsy revealed that her cause of death was asphyxiation, possibly made by a belt. The autopsy also revealed that Wanda had eaten custard shortly before her death. And this was not a food that she had at home or at school, nor was it purchased during her grocery run. It was theorised that her killer gave the custard to her. The investigation into Wanda's murder led police to a pair of sex offenders. An elderly man reported her trying to coerce kisses out of neighbourhood girls and an ex-con with a record of violence against young women. Nothing came of these leads. An anonymous caller claimed to have seen a man force a young girl matching Wanda's description into a light coloured Dutch dart. Similar tips also serviced including one caller who claims to have actually seen Wanda's body being disposed of. Two neighbourhood girls told the police of a man in black driving a Ford LTD who tried to lure them into his vehicle the Sunday prior to Wanda's murder. And yet another witness surfaced who saw a tattooed man in a green pinzo with a crying girl he swore was Wanda Walkowitz. None of these leads panned out. The most promising break in the Walkowitz case came when a neighbourhood man with a previous arrest for child endangerment was questioned for 12 hours. Police were so conf- confident that they announced an arrest was imminent. However, after passing a polygraph, the suspect was released and the murder of Wanda went to cold. It was less than a year before another girl went missing from the streets of Rochester. It was Michelle Manda who vanished while walking home from school on November 26, 1973. Although the same age as the previous victims, Manza was more childlike, teased by her peers about her weight. 
She was much more comfortable playing with younger children who tended to look up to her rather than put her down. She also had a selfless streak and on the day she disappeared, she was retracing her mother's footsteps, looking for the purse she lost the day before. Her body would be found two days later, badly beaten in Webster. Like Wanda, Michelle had been sexually assaulted, strangled and redressed. An autopsy would confirm that Mance's killers fed her a hamburger. This time, however, there would be a positive ID and for the first time a suspect would emerge. One of Michelle's friends said she saw her in the front seat of a beige car around the time that she went missing. The driver was operating recklessly and caused an accident, to which there were other witnesses. Later, a man came forward to tell the police that he came across a beige car stopped in RT350 near the town of Macedon. Believing the vehicle disabled, the man stopped to offer assistance. The driver moved forward to conceal the license plate of the car and to block the would-be Samaritan from getting a good look at the girl he had with him, a girl matching Michelle's description. When the driver curled a fist and raised it tensely, the man got back into his car and drove away, making a mental note of the partial plate number. Later, an account would emerge of an identical man bringing a cheeseburger to a crying girl that the witness swore was Michelle Manza at a fast food restaurant in Penfield. The man called the police back a few days later to report that he saw the driver of the beige sedan again and this time he had the full plate number. This information led investigators to a petty criminal in Lyons, New York, an unemployed divorcee who lived with relatives. He was a good match for the sketch generated from the eyewitness accounts in the man's investigation but claimed to have been home at the time of the murder, working the phones in search of a job. Phone records seemed to confirm this although the man did live with relatives who also could have made those calls. Nevertheless, the suspect passed the polygraph test and was released. His name has not been made public. Michelle's murder went cold shortly after, although leads continued to surface and several high-profile suspects were investigated. Miguel Colon remained on police radar until his death and another suspect, serial rapist named James Termini, committed suicide before his arrest on sexual battery charges, but he was cleared via DNA in 2007. Kenneth Bianchi, who went on to terrorise the city of Los Angeles along with his cousin Angelo Buono as one of the Hillside Stranglers, is perhaps the most high-profile person in interest in these killings. Bianchi would initially bring suspicion on himself writing to a girlfriend that he left New York because he was a suspect in the murders. However, there is no evidence that Bianchi ever killed before linking up with Buono and the only known murders he committed were linked to him and they were solved. The murders returned to the headlines in April of 2010 when a serial killer with t- ties to Rochester named Joseph Nasso was arrested in California. One of his West Coast victims, coincidentally also named Carmen Cologne, but despite some vague claims of a Buffalo area rape in his journal, he could not be linked to earlier murders. It is also worth noting that Bianchi and Nasso preyed on adult women rather than children. Sergeant C.J. Zimmerman of the Monroe County Sheriff's Department is quoted as saying, There are many different theories. One or two killers, I don't know the answer. Although investigators interrogated more than hundreds of potential suspects in relation to these murders, the perpetrator of the homicides was never caught and the case remains unsolved. If you or anyone you know has information regarding the murders, please contact the Monroe County Sheriff's Department.